Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth, in earth, as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture we read will be read from Isaiah chapter 60, starting at verse 18. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy wall salvation, and thy gates praise. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be in. Thy people shall be all righteous. They shall inherit it, the land forever. The branches of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation, I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. I have read for you Isaiah chapter 60, verses 18 through 22. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and doing of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Welcome to Bible Christian Fellowship of the Spirit. The title of today's lesson is Reflection in the Mirror. And Brother Paul will be our for today. Brother Thank you, Thank you Brother Devin. Welcome, everyone. Bible Christian Fellowship of the Spirit. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Shabbat Shalom, have an awesome day of rest. All of that, all the well wishes that come with this feast day, which we call the Sabbath day, because the Lord says it's a feast day. And it's a day to rejoice in because of our understanding that we can even stand here in our faith on this day. What a blessing, sisters and brothers. As Brother Devin said, the title of this lesson is Reflections in the Mirror. And it's about self-examination because we are in that season. We're coming up on the Passover for those of you that calculated the, ca uh, the calendar in uh, one of the same methods in which we did where we added an extra new moon, the 13th new moon, to come up with our calendar. And we are now in our Passover season. Some brethren already celebrated theirs last month. About this time, they were preparing to examine themselves. So that's what we're um, going to deal with today. Reflections in the mirror. Like I like to say, putting that mirror up in front of yourself so you can look at where you're at, not always looking at where someone else is at, because that righteous judgment is important too. But the righteous judgment we're going to deal with today is the righteous judgment that you should be using when you look in that mirror on a daily basis, but especially in this season. And we're going to start this off with the definition of the word meditation, because examination it's just that. It's meditation, sisters and brothers. Brother, what's the definition of that word meditation? Meditation. Close or continued thought. The turning or revolving of the subject in the mind. Serious contemplation. Serious contemplation. And the proper way to meditate is you take a scripture and you meditate on what that scripture means to you in your daily walk. That's a meditation that we should use. Not this far off Eastern meditation where we just clear our minds and whatever thought comes in, we act on it. Oh, go kill everyone at the school. Oh, oh it's from God. Let me get my gun. No. The meditation that we use is sound meditation, but this is not a, a lesson on meditation. We're going to touch a little bit on meditation in the lesson because that's where we do our examination is in our daily meditation. And examination, meditation it's the same thing. Reflection and meditation. It's the same thing. We're going to see some other words and some scriptures that as it comes up, we're going to show you that that is also another word for meditation. Or as my dear older brother likes to say, he uses those synonyms for the word. But they mean the same thing. So we're going to start this off, the actual lesson in Mark, the 13th chapter. And we're just going to deal with examining ourselves for this feast season, as the Lord says we should. Mark 13, and we're going to start it off in verse 12. Mark 13, 
and verse 12. These days, sisters and brothers, that we're about to read about here are right around the corner. Go ahead, brother. Verse 13 and verse 12. Yes, sir. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son, and the child shall raise up, rise up against their parents, uh -huh. and shall cause them to be put to death. Go ahead. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. These are times that are right around the corner, sisters and brothers. And I don't know if this if they're 10 years or 100 years, but we're in those end of time. And at this particular time, as it's leading toward the return of our Messiah, Christ Jesus, brother is going to betray brother to death. The father is going to put the son to death. Children are going to rise against their parents and have them killed. And because of the faith in Christ Jesus, we will be hated by all men for his name's sake. But we have to endure until the end. Now, this next set of scriptures is where we are supposed to be as Bible Christians. Let's go take a look at this. Luke, the 14th chapter. Luke, the 14th chapter. And this lesson is geared more toward those that are already in the faith because of the time of the season that's at hand now. Luke 14, and brother, we're going to pick this up in verse 26. 14 and verse 26. Go ahead. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brother and sister, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, this isn't the type of hate that we just read about in Mark. This hate that the Lord is talking about here is having your mind right, having your mind and your heart fixed on him. And if any of your family comes to you with something crazy that'll take you away from keeping his commandments, you don't deal with it at all. You love the Lord more than them, or you hate your father, your mother, your wife, your children, your brothers, your sisters, and even your own life. In other words, you put everything else to the side and everything that the Lord says comes first. That's the point you have to be at. Go ahead and continue, brother. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Because if you do not, you cannot be his disciple. Now, if you're in a room like this, the odds are 99.9% .9 that you are already grounded in this. And that other one per uh, percentage point, that point one, you're learning. And hopefully you continue to learn and you don't turn from it. Go ahead and continue, brother. 28. Which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it? Every one of us that is proclaiming to be a servant of the Most High God, the great God of Israel, that has been baptized in his name, we've already counted the cost. That's why we stand here on the Sabbath day and we're doing these lessons. Because we're already in. We've taken hold of the covenant or the agreement. We said, yes, Lord, you do your part like you say you will do. And we're going to hope that that happens. And we're going to do our part. So that at the appointed time, we have some ground to stand on. Lord, we did what you said do. And you can say, well done, my faithful servant. Go ahead and continue, brother. 29. Let's happily, after he had laid the foundation, is not able to finish it. All that behold it began to mock him, uh -huh. saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Go ahead, bro. What king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and counted whether he is able with 10,000 to beat him that cometh against him with 20,000? Or else, while the others are yet a great way off, he sent it the advantage and desire conditions of peace. Uh -huh. So likewise, who sorry he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath? He cannot be my disciple. So we have to forsake everything that we have to be the Lord's disciples. And if you're sitting here and you've been baptized, you already have done that. You've probably already done the good fight at work with getting the Sabbath off and everything else. We've already crossed all those little things that all this milk, when it first comes into us in his word, when we come into this, all that little milk comes together. And next thing you know, we start eating meat. And we've already done this. We've counted this cause. And we sit here now, servants of the Most High God. Go ahead, brother. Salt is good. But if the salt have lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salt? And we are supposed to be the salt of the earth. In other words, we are supposed to entice people. When they start getting this little bit of a bite of milk, oh, that salt makes it taste good. Because now we are ambassadors of Christ. 
We're living examples as well as teaching out of the book. Go ahead, brother. It is neither fit for the land nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that have an ear, let him hear. Yes, sir. So anyone that is here in this lesson that's been baptized, you're already grounded. You already have counted this cost. And this is where all of us are supposed to be. But now here's something that we all don't really take a good, at least I let it slip from my mind from time to time. The awesomeness of this God that we serve. This God that we serve is absolute pure holiness. Absolute pure righteousness. Absolute. Absolute. That's why the Father's never dealt with man. He is in, the, in, in our state, he is too righteous to deal with man. He is too pure to deal with man. We couldn't handle it. He sends his only begotten son. Moses goes up and talks to Christ Jesus face to face and starts taking on that spiritual body. He comes down, he starts shining. He starts taking on everlasting life because he's talking to the tree of life. This is absolute 100%. You can't get more pure. There's no way to describe pure. Back in the day, for an example, I used to play this crazy game called Dungeons and Dragons. And in Dungeons and Dragons, some of you shaking your head, you might have played it. You know a little bit about it. You take out a character, and they have this, they have evil, chaotic evil, kind of evil, super good, super pure. Oh, it should be God. And they have all these different kind of um, uh, characters that you'll take on with their conversation. Nobody wanted to play the absolute good because you couldn't. Because you knew somebody was going to smack you in the head with a baseball bat, but there's a baby getting trampled by a horse. What do you do? Well, you've got to play your character. You've got to go pick up the baby and get hit in the head with the bat. Nobody wanted to play that character because it was even so hard to play that character in the game. And you know what? This absolute pure holiness and righteousness that is our Father's, He is the complete opposite of our human makeup. Because our thoughts are only evil continually. Let's take a look at some of this absolute pure holiness. This absolute pure righteousness. Let's, let's go to Isaiah, the 64th chapter. Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64. And we're going to read a little bit before. There's, there's no words to describe how holy our God is. 64, and pick it up at verse 1, brother. 64 and 1. Go ahead. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down to thy presence. Uh huh. As when the melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the water to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nations that the nations may tremble at thy presence. That the nations may tremble at their presence. When this God is so powerful, when he comes down the mountains, mountain burn. The other nations that don't even know him tremble at his presence. You can read that in Joshua. There's a nation found out about Joshua taking down Jericho, and they put on this big scheme to keep from getting killed because they trembled at the God of Israel. We've heard that this mighty God is with you. And they come up with this big scheme to save their skins. That's how the nations tremble at the power of this God. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. When thou didst terrible things which we looked not for, thou camest down, the mountains flowed down at thy presence. Uh -huh. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither have the eye seen, O God, besides thee. What he has prepared for him that waited for him. Now we can read about it. We can read about the return of the Lord. We can look at all the way to the streets and everything. What the emeralds and the pure streets of gold and all this. But there's no way to describe what is waiting for us. Our reward. This pure, holy God knows our makeup. And he's telling us constantly, examine yourselves. Examine yourselves. Take a look at yourselves. I'm telling you how to conduct yourself. You better keep yourself straight. And I'm going to tell you, sisters and brothers, out of experience, if you're not doing it on a daily basis, you're going to continually fall short. When the same situation comes up, you're going to respond the same way every time. You have to grow spiritually, and the only way to do it is with his word. Go ahead and continue, brother. Verse 5. Thou meetest him which rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. 
those that remember thee in thy way, behold, thou art wrong, for we have sinned, and thou and those, I'm sorry, and those is continuance, and we shall be saved. Uh -huh. Go thou, on. thou meetest him that rejoices and worketh righteousness. Those that remember thee in thy ways, behold, thou art wrong. This is a God right now that is very angry with the state of mankind. Not just the United States, but mankind as a whole. He is very wroth with us. For we have sinned. And we continue to sin. In those sins is continuance. We're going to continue to sin till the day that he lays us down or gives us our change. But yet, because of his grace and mercy, we shall be saved. Even once you take hold of this covenant, you continue to sin. And you continue to sin on a daily basis. That's why this God says, examine yourselves. Go ahead and continue, brother. But we are all as unclean things, and our righteousness are as filthy rags. Our righteousness is, is, is as filthy rags, and that does not change no matter how long you walk the walk, and how much you've been baptized, and how much you're preaching or serving or whatever. No matter what you do, your righteousness is a filthy rag. That's why we have to come under the shed blood of Christ Jesus and put on his righteousness. Go ahead and continue, brother. And we all, and we all do fade as a leaf. Uh -huh. Our iniquity, like the wind, have taken us away. Yes, sir. And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us because of our iniquity. We're not even worthy to go before our heavenly Father. That's why we got his beloved son that came and knows our makeup because he lived in this body. He's the one that goes to the Father. Because you can't have filthy rags approaching pure righteousness. You can't do it. So you have to have pure righteousness going up to pure righteousness pleading the case for us filthy rags. Otherwise, we don't have a shot, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and continue, brother. But now, O oh Lord, thou art our Father. We are the clay. And he is now our father, and we are the clay. Pay attention to this scripture. Go ahead, brother. Thou art harder, and we are all the are the work of thy hand. Go ahead. Be not wrapped wroth, very sore, O Lord. Neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee. We are all thy people. And we are all his people that have taken hold of his covenant. But one thing we have to remember, he is our father. We are the clay. He's the potter. He's the one that forms us and moves us and sends us where he would send us. You don't pray. You don't meditate. You don't read his word. He's not talking to you. You may be talking to him, but you're not hearing anything he's bringing back to you because he talks through prayer and meditation. And when you are examining yourself, you'll find out in this lesson, you do it in a, as a form of of meditation, but we're getting ahead a little bit. Let's go to Psalm the 55th chapter. Psalm the 55th chapter. Continue to look at this absolute pure holiness and righteousness. Psalm 55, what Brother Devin always says, how absolute is absolute? Like one of our teachers used to say all the time. Absolute is absolute. When a statement is absolute, it means that it's not false and there's no other way for it to turn. Psalm 55, and pick it up in verse 12, brother. 55 and 12. Go ahead. For it was not an enemy that <laughs> reproaches me, then I could have bore. Uh -huh. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. Now this is Jesus talking by the mouth of David. Go ahead, brother. But it was thou, a man, mine equal, my God, and my acquaintance. And he's talking about being put to death on the day that he was put to death. For the sins of the world, he says it wasn't someone that was his equal, his guide, his acquaintance that did this. Go ahead, brother. He took three, we took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. He says we took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. The father and the son took sweet counsel together to come up with a plan, and they had it from the foundation of the world, to give man the right when he went stupid to learn how to live forever on the right side of the kingdom, eternal life. I shot back at the tree of life. And Moses is a good example, like I said earlier, about what happens when you're talking to that tree of life. You start taking on that countenance. You start taking on that form. You start taking on that mind of that person. You start becoming just like him. 
absolute pure holiness. Took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company, the Father and the Son. Absolute pure righteousness. Let's go to Isaiah the 40th chapter. Isaiah the 40th chapter. Isaiah 40, Isaiah 40, and let's pick it up at verse 25, brother. 40 and 25, go ahead. To whom then will ye like me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Saith the Holy One, go ahead, brother. Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, we have created these things. They bring it out their host by number. He calleth them all by names by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power. Not one fell. Yes, sir. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Go ahead, brother. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, can is not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. Yes, sir. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Yes, sir. Even the youth shall faint. And be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Uh -huh. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Look at this power that your God is trying to give you, sisters and brothers. This power right here, he wants you to have. And this power all stems from absolute pure holiness and righteousness. It says, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creators of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There's no searching of his understanding. You can't search his understanding. You can read his word and he'll open your eyes as you respond in righteousness to his pure holiness. He had Peter write down, be ye holy as I am holy. And when you go to find out, Peter said, as it is written, you go to look where it was written, and what do you see? He gives you a commandment that says, be ye holy as I am holy. And he gives you a bunch of commandments, and he says, this is holiness, this is righteousness. When he was here in the flesh, Christ Jesus, when he was dealing with Israel in the wilderness, he said, I'm so holy, when you go and relieve yourself, Dig a hole and cover it up so I don't step in that mess. Now, for us, that's a natural way of relieving ourselves. To the absolute being with the absolute pure holiness and righteousness, cover it up. I don't even want to see that junk. I don't want to smell it. I don't want to step in it. Sometimes we forget. We don't understand exactly who we're dealing with. In verse 29, he says, he giveth power to the faint. Who do we think we are sometimes, sisters and brothers? None of this is ours. Nothing we've ever learned was ours. We learned everything from teachers and books. This guy gives us a way to make everlasting life and make his kingdom. And says, this is the way I want you to do it. He gives us power. We can't stand with false pride because we possess something that we never had in the beginning that was given to us. And that it's available for all men and women. I'm not leaving the sisters out. Let's continue. Let's go to Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hebrews 4. And brother, we're going to pick it up in verse 14. 4 and 14. Go ahead, brother. Seeing then we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Uh -huh. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. All points tempted like we are, yet without sin. He called himself in the Old Testament the Holy One of Israel, the only one without sin. Pure righteousness and holiness. Some of us can't go an hour and a half without some crazy thing coming in, starting us off, getting us towards sin. Our brother and our friend, Christ Jesus, our Messiah, lived 33 and a half years and was perfect. That is absolute pure holiness. Go ahead, brother. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. 
that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I've never come anywhere near this chapter without reading that verse because that verse right there is our hope because of his holiness. Let's go to Philippians, the second chapter. Philippians, the second chapter. Philippians 2. Philippians 2. And brother, pick it up in verse 5. 2 and 5. Remember, we're still looking at this absolute pureness of our God. Go ahead, brother. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ uh -huh. Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He was in the form of God. He knew it wasn't robbery to be equal with God because he was equal with God. He, well, he took sweet counsel with God. He walked about the house of God because it's his place. He's the son of the father. He's the creator that made everything. We know that. Go ahead, brother. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Remember, he didn't sin. He's the Holy One of Israel, and he came down here to suffer and die for our sins. One other place, Job, the fourth chapter. This is an absolute, pure, righteous being. You don't get any more pure and righteous. You can't even imagine how pure and righteous this being is. I want to stress this over and over and over today. Job 4 and pick it up at verse 17, brother. 4 and 17, go ahead. Shall mortal man be more just than God? That's an awesome question. Lean not to your own understanding. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it is hard. We get that push of false pride, that adrenaline starts pumping, and we think we know the answer. It's at those times we need to take a step back. And maybe if we have the opportunity, we need to seek the wise counsel of the one that can give us the wisest counsel. We need to take his prayer and meditation. Go ahead and continue, brother. Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? You have parents in the room or parents that are hearing me. Are your children wiser than you when they say, no, that ain't the way it's going to be, mommy or daddy. We're doing it like this. How far does that fly? It doesn't fly in my house very far. By the time it comes out, it's like, I'm sorry, but it don't even come out anymore. Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Your creator that created you. That could snuff you out like this, and he's not a respecter of persons, and he doesn't care. He doesn't want to do it, but he's not looking at you. Oh, hi, Paul. How are you? Oh, hi, Father. How oh, I'm doing good. No, he don't even know me by name. He knows me probably as human being number 400 million, billion, gazillion, trillion, number 32. And he's not a respecter of persons, and he don't care about me, my birth date, or my anniversary, or none of it. He wants to know, are you righteous or wicked? Because I'm pure holiness, and I can't deal with you unless you're going to become pure holiness. Go ahead and continue, brother. Verse 18. Behold, he put no trust in his servants. He put no trust in his servants. As a matter of fact, he threw them out of paradise. Go ahead, brother. And his angels he charged with folly. And he charged his angels with iniquity. We can read that where he threw Satan out of heaven. Go ahead, brother. How much less is them that dwell in houses of clay? That's us. We dwell in houses of clay. Go ahead, brother. Our foundation is the dust. And our foundation is the dust, the dirt. I'm just a lighter shade of dirt. Some brothers are a darker shade of dirt. There's lighter shades, darker shades. It's all over the place. We're all dirt. Dirt. Righteousness of filthy rags. Go ahead, brother. Which are crushed before the law. They are destroyed from morning to evening. They perish from ever without any regarding it. They destroyed from morning to evening, perish forever without even regarding it. Go ahead, brother. Does not their excellency which is in them go away? They die even without wisdom. They die even without wisdom. What happens when you die? You take care of nothing anymore that happens under the sun. And all your hope and all your wisdom and knowledge, it perishes. And if you die without wisdom, you got no shot of eternal life. None. Unless you're one of those that was just completely, your heart was just great and you gave everything to the poor and you didn't know nothing about the Lord's Sabbath days and feast days and any of dietary law, none of it. But all you did was love everyone to the very best of your ability, then you might have a shot. But otherwise, without the law, you don't have a shot. 
Let's look at examining ourselves. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. 2 Corinthians 13. We got a little bit of time. This is going to be, I'm pushing two hours today, sisters and brothers. 2 Corinthians 13. 2 Corinthians 13. And let's pick it up in verse 5. 13 and verse 5, brother. Go ahead. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Examine yourselves. Prove your own selves. Don't worry about what sister or so-and-so and brother umpty ump is doing. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you? Except you be reprobate. Prove your own selves. Let's go to Revelation, the second chapter. Let's look at what it means. We're going to look at the uh, real briefly at uh, the Spirit speaking to the churches. But we're going to kind of look at it from a little bit of a different angle. We're not going to analyze and break it all down. We're just going to look at a few things about examining ourselves. Revelation 2, and pick it up at verse 1, brother. Revelation 2. Revelation 2. Revelation 2. And, brother, pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Unto the angel of the churches of Ephesus write, These things said, said he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. Who walketh in the midst of seven go camp, seven golden candlesticks? Uh -huh. I know thy works, thy labor, thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. Thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. So now Jesus is saying, I know your works and your labor and your patience, and how you canst not bear them which are evil. And you have tried them which they say they are apostles and are not, and you found them liars. We do all that today. That's a Matthew protocol there. When someone falls short, you need to approach them. But that's for another time. Go ahead and continue, brother. And has borne and has patience for my name's sake, has labored and has not fainted. And you've borne and you've had patience for my name's sake, and you've labored. And sisters and brothers, you have not fainted. I'm watching you. This is Christ Jesus talking. He's, this is the kind of report I want to hear if he was talking to me right now. This sounds like the kind of report I'd want to hear. Let's see what else he says. Go ahead, brother. Nevertheless, I have someone against thee. Nevertheless, I've got something against you. Nevertheless, because if you offended one, sisters and brothers, you offended all. That's why we guard our heart and strive to be perfect. And we abstain from all appearance of sin. And once we know for sure it's sin, we don't even give it a second thought. We run the other way. Go ahead and continue, brother. Because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first work, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and remove thy candlestick out of thy place, except thou repent. He says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. Remember. What do you have to do to remember? you got to think about it. You got to reflect on it. You got to consider it. You got to think about it. You have to meditate on it. It all means meditate, sisters and brothers. Remember, therefore, from one start or fall and repent. You can't repent unless you're taking a look at the situation and seeing where you fall short. Repent means to turn from. If you don't know what you need to turn from, you cannot repent. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. Do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of this place. Except what? Except you repent. Go ahead, brother. But this thou hast, that thou hated the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also uh -huh. hate. He, had, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcome will I give to eat of the tree of life. Which is in the midst of the paradise of God. To him that overcomes. So you think about it. You pray on it. You meditate. You reflect. You consider. You remember. You repent. You turn from it. And then there's some promises. Skip down to 19 and continue, brother. I know that works. And charity and service and faith and the patience and the works. And the last to be more than the first. Look at this. Jesus, he knows the works and the, and the love and the service and the faith and the patience and your works. And the last to be first. 
church. You got nothing but service and love going on here. And he's recognizing that. Go ahead and continue, brother. Notwithstanding. Notwithstanding, or but. Go ahead, brother. I have a few things against you. I got a few things against you. Go ahead. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calling herself a prophet, is to teach and to seduce my servants, uh -huh. to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. I gave her space to repent of her fornication, but, and she repented not. The Lord still gave her space to repent from her fornication. In other words, he wanted her to think about or contemplate or reflect on her actions or meditate on them. Go ahead, brother. Behold, I would cast her into a bed, and them that committed adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent for their deeds. Except they repent from their deeds. But to repent, you got to look at it. Go ahead, brother. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins of the heart. And I will give unto everyone according to their works. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. I keep stepping on but I apologize. Because the Lord says he searches the reins and the hearts. And when you come into this and you start praying and meditating, we're going to read about it a little bit. You're asking him to prove your heart. And search your heart. Go ahead and continue, bro. But unto you I say, and unto the rest of Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcome and keep my words unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Now look what the Lord is saying. But unto you I say, and unto the rest of Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, in which you have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put none other burden on you. In other words, what you got, what you understand, go ahead and do this. I'm not going to put any other burden, but that which you have already, hold fast till I come. How do you know if you're holding fast? you to pray on it. you got to meditate on it. You've got to contemplate about it. You've got to reflect about it. To see if you're standing in the faith. You can't just go to church on Saturday and keep the feast days and say, I'm right with God. We're going to read where he warns you about that too. Go ahead, brother. And he shall rule them with an iron rod of iron. As a vessel of a car shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. We read earlier as servants of the Lord that he is the father and we are the clay. He's the potter. He forms us. And makes us what he wants us to be for his purpose. But if we do not respond to that, he breaks us into shivers. This is a God that is telling you, reflect, meditate on your actions, and keep yourself straight. Go to Revelation, the third chapter, and pick it up at verse 2, brother. 3 and 2, go ahead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. Be watchful. And strengthen the things which remain. To be watchful, you got to look around at yourself. You got to take a look at that man in the mirror. And then you got to do what? Say it together. Reflect and meditate on it. Go ahead, brother. That are ready to die. For I have not found thy worst purpose before God. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy worst purpose before God. In other words, you're starting to slip, sister or brother. I need you to reflect on what's happening here so you don't fall off into the deep end. Take a look at yourself. Examine yourself. Go ahead, brother. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If there, Therefore thou shalt not watch. I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few things even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white. For they are worthy. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. You got a few names, even in certain, which have not defiled their garments, those white garments. Those white garments that represent absolute pure righteousness, pure holiness. You get a spot of dirt, you're eating a hot dog at the ball game with your brand new Cubs or socks, home white jersey on, you get that spot of mustard on it, and then the sun hits it, man, it's blinding you. That's what we're supposed to be doing, sisters and brothers. We've got these white robes of righteousness on. We're supposed to be keeping them clean. And we keep them clean, obviously, through obedience. Faith is belief becomes obedience. 
but we got to keep looking at ourselves to make sure that we're on the right track. We have to keep examining ourselves, making sure that we're doing what the Lord says do. It's real easy as a human being to start the backslide before you even know it. Before you even know you're starting to backslide, you've already begun to do it. That's why it's so important to continue to take a look at yourself. Tell us where you're at. Go ahead, brother. Verse five. Yes, sir. He that I'm coming, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. To him that overcometh, the only way you're going to overcome is if you're continually taking a look at yourself. Skip down to 10 and continue, brother. Verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Uh -huh. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast. Behold, I come quickly and hold that fast which thou hast. How do you know what to hold fast to? There's so much in this walk, sisters and brothers, especially in the beginning. You're walking this, well, I can't go there. I'm walking, oh, I can't go there. You're real suspect. You're walking soberly. You're paying attention with everything you're doing. Well, in order to hold fast, you got to do the same thing. You got to be real cautious. You got to take a look at your past actions to make sure that they're heading you in the right direction. So you need to reflect on that. You need to meditate on that. You need to constantly be talking to your God, asking him to help you to see it. Go ahead and finish that, brother. That no man take that crown. That no man take your crown. Go ahead. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go on and more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. And that's the promise of keeping yourself straight. Let's go to James, the first chapter. James, the first chapter. James 1, James 1, and brother, we're going to pick it up at verse 25. 1 and verse 25. Go ahead. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer. Verse, verse, of one, the, verse 1 and 21. I'm sorry, I'm 25. I thought maybe that was a wrong spot. No, verse 1 and 21. Right? Yes, sir. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. You got to be eaten more than just a Sabbath. Can you just come to class and have a couple sandwiches and maybe a salad if your class is feeding you in class, and then wait till next Sabbath to eat? Absolutely not. Give us this day our daily bread is more than just food. It's spiritual food. The Lord's not going to make you dig into his word on a daily basis. It's up to you to keep yourself straight. You can get a little reprieve here on the Sabbath and get yourself a little kickstart to get you to Monday. But that's sometimes it won't even get you to Monday. It gets you to Saturday night. And next thing you know, that mind of Christ is out the window. Because when your heart is not filled with the mind of Christ or not filled with his word or his doctrine, it's filled with something other. And everything else other than the word of God comes from the world. And that's what we're trying to stay out of. Lay apart all filthiness, superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Go ahead, brother. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. And be doers of the word and not hearers only, because faith is belief turns into obedience or turns into disobedience. Go ahead, brother. Deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Natural face in a mirror. For he beholdeth himself. Uh, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a mirror. Go ahead, brother. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Because he beholdeth himself and he goes his way, and he forgets what kind of man it was that he was. 
might have come into the Word, you look at yourself and go, I'm doing pretty good. I fast twice a week. I get tithes of everything. 10% of everything. Hey, I'm a pretty good guy as a Christian goes. I'm going to go keep the Sabbath day. Maybe go preach a little bit with some of the brothers at that Sunday church next week. I'm a great guy. I really am. I got it all going on. And then you turn around and walk away. But there's one thing you forgot. Go ahead and continue, brother. Well, who's so looking to the perfect law of liberty? You got that perfect law of liberty that's supposed to be your standard when you're looking at the man in the mirror. You're not just up there combing your hair, brushing your teeth. Oh, look at my pearly whites. You're looking in the mirror, examining yourself for a reason. And what you're examining yourself with is that perfect law of liberty, that standard of our God that says, are you or are you not pleasing in my sight? Go ahead, brother. And continue therein. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in, the, in his deed. And that man that's looking in the mirror, that's examining himself, and he's seeing where he's fallen short and what he needs to do to correct it, this man shall be blessed in his deed because he's not a forgetful hearer. He's a doer of the word, too. Go ahead, brother. Or is that it? That's it. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Now, we're supposed to be doing that daily, sisters and brothers. Daily. We're supposed to be praying with all prayer and supplication. Three times a day, the prophets were praying. The Lord says, pray in all ways. Meditation is where you receive from the Lord. You can pray all day long to the cows coming home, but if I'm asking somebody for something and they're not answering me, who cares what I'm asking for? 1 Corinthians 11. We're going to see now we're in the season to examine ourselves. Are we worthy to take the Passover? Praise God, this lesson is a week ahead of time because this gives us a chance for those that don't have that understanding of what they're looking for to start examining yourself so you don't take that body and blood unworthily. Go ahead and continue, brother. 11 and 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same was betrayed to bread. Uh -huh. And when he gave thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Uh -huh. And after the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Yes, sir. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Now the Lord said that the ordinance of the Passover, or that the, the feast of the Passover, because it's a feast and it's also a memorial. The Lord's got it written. He says, these are my feasts. It is a feast, but it's a memorial feast. He said it should be done forever, by ordinance forever throughout all generations. Right here, the Lord changed the ordinance of the Passover from the full lamb with the bitter herbs, cooking it whole and everything. He changed it to the unleavened bread and the wine. So this is the ordinance that we keep forever now. Go ahead, brother. 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. And if you drink, if you eat this bread and drink this cup, in other words, you take that Passover unworthily, you are guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Go ahead, brother. But let a man examine himself. So let him eat of the bread and drink of that cup. But let a man examine himself first, and then he can eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Go ahead. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For if you eat and drink unworthily, you eat and drink damnation to yourself, not discerning the Lord's body. How can you eat or partake of this unworthily? Well, if you're a male and you're not circumcised, you eat and drink unworthily. But if you're reading your book on a daily basis, when you get to that, you see, oh, i got to be circumcised. Let me go talk to wherever I'm at to my teacher and find out what the deal is with that. And now you start taking some understanding. Or you have a lesson or any class that is going to keep the Passover is going to tell you straight up you need to be circumcised. You don't know that if you're not reading, if you're not somewhere where they're teaching you, and you're not digging in that book on a regular basis. What else are we going to examine ourselves about? We're going to examine ourselves to see if we're walking right. 
before the Lord. Is our past conduct, God, does it have us on a path where we're walking in righteousness and we can continue to move forward in righteousness? That's what we're taking a look at. That's part of what we're examining ourselves. We're looking at our heart. Are we guarding our heart? Or are we allowing these crazy thoughts to take us to places we shouldn't go? That's part of what we're examining ourselves about. We're seeing if we are pleasing in our master's eyes when we examine ourselves. And we always use his standard of conduct to determine ours, to see where we're at on that path. Go ahead and continue, brother. Are you done with that? Let's go to 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. 1 Peter 4, one verse, verse 17. 4 and 17. Go ahead, brother. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Yes, sir. And if it first began at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Now, we use this a lot. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And that's true. And we use that a lot for righteous judgment lessons when we're looking at to determine if the brothers are walking the way they need to be walking and other sisters and everything. But the, it begins at the house of God. It begins with you. It begins with me. It begins with that mirror first. You can't walk around with a beam in your eye trying to decipher everything else. You've got to take a look at yourself first. You've got to see if you're walking straight. Are you loving your neighbor? Are you loving your enemy? Are you loving people even when they don't love you back? Because that's part of the requirement. That's absolutely part of the requirement. Let's go to Lamentations, the third chapter. Lamentations, the third chapter. Did you finish that verse? I don't think you did, did you? Okay. Lamentations, the third chapter. See, now I got it in the back of my head. I'm not going to mess up. And here I go, starting to mess up. But I think you all like when I mess up. Though. Lamentations, the third chapter. Lamentations 3. Hey, you got to have some fun. If you could have it at my expense on a Sabbath day in a two-hour lesson and you could laugh a little bit and stay awake, then by all means, please do. Lamentations 3 and verse 40, brother. 3 and 40. Go ahead. Let us search and try our ways and Let, turn again to go the ahead. Lord. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Go ahead, brother. Let us lift up our hearts with our hands unto God in the heavens. And let us lift our heart with our hands unto the God in heavens. Let us search and try our ways. And then what does it say? And turn again to the Lord. Our heart is the complete opposite of our master's heart and our heavenly father's heart. They're complete pure holiness and righteousness and we're filthy rags. And our hearts are evil continually. We always have to be looking at our countenance, at our walk, to make sure we're on the path. Search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let's go to 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter. 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter. What is it you do when you search? You reflect. You look. What else do you do? You meditate. And then what happens after you meditate? you got to respond. 1 Timothy 4, and pick it up, brother, at verse 13. 4 and 13. Go ahead. Till I come, give attention, attendance to reading and exhortation to doctrine. Give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Look what he's telling Timothy. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Stay in your book. Stay close to your God. Go ahead, brother. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. Which was given thee by prophecy with the laying of hands of the uh, pre Pre presbytery. Presbytery. Got it, brothers. Go ahead, brother. Verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Meditate Here. upon these things. Give attendance to reading, exhortation, doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in you. The gift of the Holy Ghost. When you got baptized, the brothers laid hands on you and prayed. You were all clean. You're praying. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. You now got the gift of the Holy Ghost. Meditate on these things. And then what, brother? Give thyself holy to them. Give yourself holy to them. Go ahead. That that property may appear to all. Because what are we supposed to be? Salt of the earth and a light to others. That our property might appear unto all. But if you're not meditating on your conduct, you can't keep yourself straight. That's examining yourself. Reflecting on your conduct. Keeping yourself good. Go ahead, brother. Take heed unto thyself.
unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. And take heed unto yourself, because you're meditating, you're paying attention to the way you're walking, you're being a light to others, you take heed unto yourself and your doctrine, and you continue in them. Because when you do that, you're saving both yourself and those that are watching you, because you're drawing people to Christ. You're drawing people to Christ. But it all starts with reflecting, with that meditation. Let's go to Psalm, the 26th chapter. Psalm, the 26th chapter. Oh, we got some time. I won't try not to take two, two hours, but it's nice to know we got the time if we need it. Psalm 139. I saw you looking at me like that, sister. I ain't going to say which one. Oh, man, he's going to go two hours today. Psalm 139. I'm sorry. Psalm 26. Mm -hmm. We're going to 139 next. And we'll pick it up at verse 1, brother. Psalm 26 and verse 1. Go ahead. Judge me, O Lord. Judge me, O Lord. Judge me, O Lord. Go ahead. For I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, I shall not slide. Therefore, I shall not slide. Judge me, Lord. I'm walking according to your commandments. This almost sounds like that Pharisee. He's over there. I give tithes of all. I fast twice in the, in the week and all that. That almost sounds like him. Here's the difference. Go ahead, brother. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins in my heart. Examine me, O Lord. I'm walking straight before you. I'm doing my best to walk perfect. Examine me and prove me, Lord. Try the reins of my heart. Now you're asking the Lord, after you've reflected on your conduct, you're asking the Lord to look at you. Lord, I, I'm thinking I'm doing good. I think I'm right. Take a look at me, Lord, and make sure. So you've taken a look at yourself. you reflected on your kind. And we know we're supposed to be doing this daily. But especially now. you got to start somewhere. This is the season. Take a look at yourself. Get yourself as straight as you think you can with the understanding you got. And then pray to the Lord. Ask him. Show me the truth, Lord. I want to know if I'm pleasing in your sight. He's going to show you. If you really want to be pleasing in his eyes, he's going to show you. And he's going to correct you and he's going to guide you. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. For that... Loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. Uh -huh. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with this this member, this this I'm oh sorry, this similar. Yes, sir. I have hated the congregation of evil doors and will not sit with the wicked. Now this should be all of us. We're not gonna do this, Lord. We're not gonna co-sign the wickedness, we're not gonna sit in the congregation of the wicked, we're gonna stay away from evil. This should be all of us as saints. Go ahead, brother. I will wash my hand in innocence, so will I confess thine altar, O Lord, uh -huh. that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wonderful works. And that's exactly what you're going to do when you're a saint and you're walking right and you know that the Lord is pleased with your walk and you just know it. And you're over there and you're just content, especially during the feast days when they come up. You Man, you are so filled with love and joy and you just want to proclaim on a the highest mountain. Praise be to God. You just want to scream it and shout it. That's a great place to be, but it all starts with examining yourself. You got to look at yourself to keep yourself straight. Go ahead, brother. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place wherein thy honor dwelleth. Yes, sir. Verse 9. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, uh -huh. in whose hands is mischief. And their right hand is full of bribes. Don't gather my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men. Because what does the Lord do? He lets the wheat grow up with the tares. That's part of proving your mind here in this flesh so that you can start to get that mind to Christ. So when you get that spiritual change, if you've been found worthy, you get that weepy TV where you can't sin no more. Because you've been practicing it. And the Lord's going to make sure then that you can Go ahead and continue, brother. Verse 11. But as for me, I will walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be merciful unto me. Yes, sir. I put stand in an even place. And the congregation will I bless the Lord. Yes, sir. And that's where you can be when you ask the Lord after you've examined yourself. Ask him in earnestness to take a look at you and to prove your heart and examine you. And he will. And you'll grow spiritually for doing it. Let's go to Psalm 139th chapter. Psalm 139, because if you're not growing, we say it every year at Passover, and you'll hear it next Tuesday, or a week from Tuesday, 
Brother Devin will tell you, if you're in the same place this year that you were at in, uh, last year, and you haven't grown, you need to take a look at yourself big time, because you're not examining yourself. Self-examination is a big part of spiritual growth, sisters and brothers. This time of year, the Lord requires it. He commands it. Psalm 139 and verse 23. 139 and 23, brother, go ahead. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Oh, God knows my heart. Does he? Does he really? He knows your heart, absolutely. But that's standing on that. Well, I would have done, but God knows my heart. I would have done it, but God don't want to hear that because he knows your heart, and that's the problem. And in this case, this is a big asset. You want him to search your heart and prove it. You want him to try your heart. Because if he sees something that's not right, he's going to chastise you and correct you. Go ahead, brother. Verse 23. I mean 24. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Because when he searches your heart and you're praying to him and you really want to know, he's going to see if there be any wicked way in you, and he's going to lead you in the way of everlasting life. He's going to chastise you and correct you. Let's go to Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. See, this is the problem right here. And verse 9. Go ahead, brother. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Our heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. The Lord said that the Thoughts of man's heart were only evil continually. And he's the complete opposite. His heart is only pure continually, righteous continually. The problem is he does know our heart. It's desperately wicked. And yet he still loved us enough that while we were sinners, he sent his only beloved son to die for our wickedness. Go ahead, brother. I, the Lord, search the heart. I, the I Lord, the search the heart and try to range. Go ahead. Even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. He tries the heart. He tries the reins. And the reason you want him to is because he's given to every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of your doings. Self-reflection, that self-examination, that meditation is to keep us on the path so we don't slip off, so we don't fall off the path into eternal damnation. And our God, when you're sincere about it, he is going to make sure that you stay on the right path. But you got to seek him and you got to mean it, sisters and brothers. If I could do this for you, I'd be the busiest man in the world. I'd collect 20 bucks from everybody and have the big house up on the hill. But I can't do this for everybody. I can only do it for myself. Let's go to Ezekiel, the 18th chapter. Ezekiel, the 18th chapter. Ezekiel 18. Boy, the heater went off. You got quiet. Ezekiel 18 and verse 19. 18 and 19, brother, go ahead. Yet ye say, why does not the son bear the iniquity of the father? When a son have done that which is lawful and right, and have kept all my statutes, and have done them, he shall surely live. Uh -huh. The soul that sinned, this shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. Whoa, you mean I can't stand on, well, my father taught me this, and it was good enough for him, it's good enough for me? Not with the Lord. That's why he says to examine yourself, to make sure that you're walking down the right path. Go ahead, brother. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Yes, sir. But if the wicked will turn from his, all his sins that he has committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Uh -huh. All his transgressions that he has committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. And his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. The transgressions is sin. For those that don't know that, go ahead, brother. Verse 23. Have I any pleasure in all that the wicked shall die, saith the Lord, and not that he shall return from his ways and live? See, the Lord's saying, have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? 
they should return from his ways and live. He's got no pleasure in us dying. That's why he's telling us, examine yourself. Take a look at yourself. Consider your ways. Reflect on what you're doing. Meditate on my precepts. Use my standards to look at yourself in the mirror. The only thing he's not doing is slapping you physically in the face and saying, hey, dummy, are you listening to me? He's got it written every other way. Every which way but loose, sisters and brothers. And then when you turn the page, there it is. It's loose. There's no loopholes with God. Examine yourself. See if you're keeping to the highest standards of what he has already revealed to you. Because he's never going to give you something more that you don't understand. Go ahead, brother. And when the righteous turns away from his righteousness to commit iniquity and do it according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, Shall he live? All his all his righteousness that he hath done should not be mentioned. In his trespass that he hath trespassed, and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. And the Lord said, We have to endure until the end. To him that overcometh will I give, he said in Revelations 2 and 3. You got to stand fast in the faith. This is a God about what are you doing for me now? What not what have you done for me yesterday? You must endure in this. That saved doctrine, we've got lessons on that. Go ahead and continue, brother 25. Yea, ye say the way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? Uh -huh. When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commit iniquity and dies in them, for his iniquity that he hath done, shall he die. For his iniquity that he hath done, shall he die. I know I say a lot of things from this podium when we're reading from the word of God that some people don't like. I understand that because I don't like it when I'm putting it together because the first one that's getting convicted and getting knocked across the room is me because I'm the one putting it together. And then when the Lord stops beating me around and I wipe the blood off my lip and pull the hamburger off my eye, then I come up here and I give it to you. And I understand that sometimes you don't like it. Like when I teach lessons on uh, family conduct. Sometimes everybody doesn't agree with what thus saith the Lord. I'm sorry about that. What the Lord said to do was the Lord said to warn the people from me. He's coming back, and he's not a respecter of persons. You're either a sword hit here, you're either on the left or you're on the right. You're pleasing to him or you're not. And that's the bottom line. There's nothing other than that. And the Lord says over and over again that it doesn't matter what the people around you are doing. It is you that he is looking at. What have you done for him lately? Well, my wife, she, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, that was wrong of her. How did you respond, my son? Because he's going to deal with her later or vice versa. He'll deal with me later. How did you respond, my daughter? Oh, my freaking kids, they just die. Ah, you don't understand, God. Oh, really? My son, I don't understand. How did you respond? I'll deal with them later. He wants to know how you respond, how you walk. He's not concerned with anybody else. That's why he said examine yourself, not examine the sister sitting next to you and let her examine you. Prove your heart and then ask him to prove your heart. Try the reins for yourself and then ask him to try the reins. Go ahead and continue, brother. 27. Again, when the wicked man turns away from his wickedness that he has committed and do that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. He shall save his soul alive because he's looked at it. He's reflected on his actions. He's meditated on the word of God. He's repented and changed. He's turned from it, but he had to look at it first. Go ahead, brother. Because he considereth and turned away from his transgressions that he has committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Keep yourself straight. Then you can do this. Let's go to Galatians, the sixth chapter. And this is commanded of us, too. Isn't this something the Lord... He knows how it is that we're supposed to walk that's for our own good while we live together amongst each other. And then if we do our very best to get it right now, then we're going to make the kingdom and we will be incapable of sinning. This is a God that truly knows what's best for us. So now, like Ezekiel 18, you keep yourself straight. 
You don't worry about your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, the sister or brother sitting next to you or whatever. You're keeping yourself straight. Okay, you're meditating, you're praying, you're reflecting on your actions. The Lord is helping you. He slapped you around a little bit. Now you're in a good spot. You're on that road and you're walking and you're moving and you're running this race and everything's clicking. And now the Lord will put something like this in front of you. Six and one. Go ahead, brother. Brethren, any man be overtaken in a fall, ye which are spiritual, restore trust of one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself. Lest thou also be tempted. It's never about one being over another or anything like that. It's all about us running together, lest one of us be tempted and take the other one down. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, if you're not straight, you can't help nobody. You got to be straight. That's why examine yourself first. Take a look at yourself. Use God's commandments and standards. Are you falling short? What am I looking for, Brother Paul? Um, are you short? Do you say things that hurt people in your shortness? Do you do little things that others could look at and say that wasn't really Christian-like? Do you provoke people? Do you dress in a way that's going to incite lust to others? You got your chest hanging out or your, your pants are so tight you can see everything on you? These are things that we're reflecting on. These are things we're looking at, our conduct. But more important than that, we're leaving Christmas and Easter and all that garbage out because that's easy. More important than that is the love aspect. Reflecting on, are you loving, caring, and kind at all times to the best of your ability? Or are you railing on people? Talking about people. In the secret places, are you pleasing to your God? Because this outward stuff don't mean nothing. I could be next to the sisters and brothers all day long, praising God in Jesus' name, and go home and be sleeping with the next door neighbor's wife. It's the secret places that the Lord's worried about. Examining yourself isn't about telling everybody else what you're, what's going on with you. Examining yourself is becoming worthy to come under that shed blood of our Messiah. Are you walking to the very best of your ability? Are you conducting yourself in a way where your salt is worthy to savor that meat or that spiritual food? Are you walking in a way where your light is shining or are the batteries going dim? That's what you're looking at. You're looking at your conduct. You're looking at your conduct. Go ahead and continue, brother. Verse 2. Yes, sir. Bear ye one another's burdens, so fulfill the law of Christ. Did you know bearing one another's burdens? That's the law of Christ. You got a brother or sister that needs help, and you know it, and you don't go help them? The Lord might ask you about that one day. Go ahead and continue, brother. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. If a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. We're all nothing. We read that in the beginning of the lesson. We're all, our righteousness is his filthy rags. Go ahead, brother. Well, let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. But let every man prove his own work. How do you prove your own work? You got to take a look at it. Reflect, meditate, consider. Let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing. Let's go to Romans, the 12th chapter. Romans, the 12th chapter. Romans 12. Romans 12. Romans 12 in one verse, brother. Verse 3, 12 and 3. Go ahead. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Yes, sir. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. We shouldn't think any highly than we're all servants of the Most High God, and we're supposed to be helping bring others into this fold. That's the only thing that should be on our mind, and the way we conduct ourselves, obviously. Let's go to Psalm, the 19th chapter. Psalm, the 19th chapter. I never realized how quiet it was when them heaters and air conditioners went on. I could hear a pin drop in here. That means I've succeeded in putting everyone to sleep. Mm -hmm. Psalm 19. Oh, we've got someone stirring here. I must have talked too loud. I woke them up. Psalm 19. 
Everybody over there right now on the conference call is going, really? They're all sleeping? No, they're not. Psalm 19 and verse 12, brother, go ahead. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. This is a prayer to the Lord. Go ahead, brother. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Why does the Lord God keep us back from presumptuous sins? Because we don't wrestle flesh and blood. What do we wrestle? Spiritual wickedness in high places. How's the only way that we keep ourselves straight? Take a hold of the whole armor of God. We take hold of that whole armor of God, and that's the way that we keep ourselves straight, the way that we can conduct ourselves right. We get that power from him. It's not ours. A lot of brothers and sisters even, when they start talking about this word of God, and they might be talking to someone that's not from their class or maybe someone that's in a Sunday church, one of our Sunday sisters or brothers, okay? And they can get a little uppity with this. This isn't our message. This isn't our power that we've tapped into. It's a gift. It's a gift of God. It's called grace and mercy. It's not ours. Be careful how you use it. Go ahead, brother. Verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the opposite of that is if you're not meditating on a regular basis, not going to be accepted in a sight. you got to do it for it to be accepted. And we should be doing it daily. But especially in this season now. In this season now, as we prepare for the Passover, we prepare to take that remembrance of the shed blood of our Messiah and all his suffering that he did for our sins. Especially now we need to be doing this. So we got to meditate. Let's go to Haggai. Haggai, the first chapter. We have to meditate. We have to meditate on his word. Haggai 1, and let's read one verse, brother, verse 7. So we're meditating. Go ahead, brother. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. And I know this isn't all, this is precept upon precept, line upon line. This is here a little and there a little. I know that. But first we're meditating, and then we're considering our ways. We're meditating on his word. We're meditating on his precepts, on his commandments, statutes, and judgments. Then we're going to consider our ways. Let's go to Psalm, the 66th chapter. Psalm 66. Psalm 66. We meditate. We consider our ways. And then 66 and verse 18. Brother, go ahead. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So we're meditating. We're considering our ways. And then we're not regarding iniquity in our heart. The definition of regard is to love and esteem or to practice. We're a new creature. We're staying away from sin. We're walking in newness of life. So we're meditating on his word. We're considering our actions, our conduct, and then we're not going to regard iniquity or sin. We're going to push that far from us. <laughs> That is the point of examining ourselves for the Passover because what is unleavened bread? Unleavened bread is about putting sin far from us. Let's go to Proverbs, the fourth chapter. Proverbs, the fourth chapter. And we're getting close. Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4, brother, we're going to start this off in verse 23. 4 and 23. Go ahead. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence. To do something diligently means, man, you are so focused on getting that thing right. That that's all that is on your mind. You're diligent about this one thing. Keep the heart with all the diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. We have understanding of that. Go ahead, brother. Put away from thee a forward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Uh -huh. Let thine eyes look on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. And that's what we've got to do. We're keeping the heart with all the diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. We're putting away forward mouth, perverse lips. We're keeping our eyes. We're looking right on. We're letting our eyelids look straight before us. And then what, brother? Ponder the path of thy feet. 
and let all thy ways be established. And then you're going to ponder the paths of your feet. Ponder the path. Yes. Ponder. Reflect. Meditate. Consider. All one and the same. And you need to do this daily. You can't do this once a week. By the time you do it Sunday morning, and then you get ready, or Saturday morning, then you get ready to do it the next Sabbath, already Sunday by noon, you're backsliding. You need to be in this book as much as you can on a daily basis. And if you're one of these, I only read out of Sabbath. I pray that the Lord puts it in your heart to change your ways because you're not going to last very long. Go ahead and continue, brother. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. This doesn't mean you fall off to the right to wickedness or to the left to wickedness. This means don't get too high and mighty when you're walking right. Thinking you're something that you're not. Looking down on people instead of condescending the men of low estate. Or don't go off to the deep end and start sinning again. Don't go to the left or to the right. Keep yourself in the middle on that path. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter. Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter. And if you're keeping your heart right, then you can tap into this power. Deuteronomy 8, pick it up at verse 1, brother. 8 and 1. Go ahead. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, uh -huh. that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your father. Yes, sir. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God lead thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee and to know what was in thine heart whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. See, the Lord is always proving hearts, but when you ask him to prove yours, he's going to lead you and guide you toward righteousness. He was proving the hearts of the nation of Israel for 40 years in the wilderness, whether they liked it or not, to see whether or not they were going to keep his commandments. Go ahead, brother. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, and thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make be known that man does make thee know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord does man That's live. right. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. Give us this day our daily bread to keep yourself straight, sisters and brothers, because this isn't a game. It's a race for your eternal life. Go ahead, brother. The right there. Raymond waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these 40 years. 40 years. 40 years. I still don't know why I haven't bought them new sandals yet, but I use it every year. I think this is the eighth year when one of the kids, Daddy, can I, Daddy, can I, I still got eight-year-old sandals. I haven't bought a new pair. And now let's think about this. We're in Chicago. I might wear them sandals four months out of the year. Sometimes in the summer, since I've owned them sandals, it's been too cold to wear them. So let's just say four months out of the year I've worn them sandals, times eight. Them sandals right now are falling apart. They barely fasten. The leather on top are all beat up. The only time I ever wear them now is in the garden or when it's raining cats and dogs, and i got to go out in the yard for something because they're falling apart, beat up. Four months out of the year for eight years. Forty years in the wilderness, nothing waxed old. Right there should have been done. But that would have been all of us, though, sisters and brothers, because our hearts are wicked continually. That's why we have to guard them. We got to meditate on his precepts. We got to constantly consider our ways, making sure that we're straight. Then we can tap into this kind of power right here. We're 40 years and nothing waxed old, and the feet don't even hurt. Man, I've been standing up here in an hour and a half, my feet are hurting already. And I got the most comfortable shoes I've ever bought on my feet right now. 40 years. This power that we can tap into right here, sisters and brothers, can only be done one way and one way only. By keeping us ourselves as straight as we can. And in order to do that, we have to examine ourselves. Because we've already read about this absolute pure holiness and this absolute pure righteous being that we're dealing with. Tell us where you're at and continue, brother. Verse 5. Yes, sir. Thou shalt also consider in thy heart that as a man chasing his son, so the Lord thy God chasing thee. I'm not lying to you, sisters and brothers. Prove me. Right there, I told you that the Lord chastens those that he loves. When you ask him to keep you straight, he's going to correct you. 
When you don't ask him to keep you straight, he's going to smack you instead of correcting you. Go ahead, brother. Verse 6. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. And that's the whole goal of what we have right now. We need to walk in his ways and fear him so we can make his kingdom. Let's go back to James, this time the fifth chapter. Here's a form of prayer that the Lord has given us. When we're examining ourselves and we come up with something that we don't understand, but we know we're struggling with it, we just, man, we need help because we're earnestly taking a look at ourselves and reflecting our, on our conduct. James 5, and we'll pick it up at verse 13, brother. 5 and 13, go ahead. If any among you are afflicted, let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Uh -huh. Is any sick among you? Let him call on the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. And the prayer of and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven. See what this is saying. This is a form of prayer. This is a form of self-reflection. You're meditating. You're over there, you're considering your conduct, and you're seeing something within yourselves, whether you're sick with the flu or something like that, or you're sick with something you can't put down that you know is not pleasing to your God. You take it to the elders of the church, they'll anoint you with oil and, prayer, and pray over you, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Your prayer shall save you, as well as the, or, the elders praying over you, because it's your faith. You're the one that is taking advantage of a process that the Lord said you can do. And if you have committed sins, they shall be forgiven you. Wherever it is you might get caught up in. Whatever it is. Or maybe you just got a bad flu that you can't get rid of. Or you got the arthritis is on you. Or you got that one thing that you just can't stay away from. And it's grieving you because you know it's not pleasing to your God and you need help with it and you prayed and fasted and you can't let it go. So you come up to the elders of the church because you're afflicted, you're sick and you're giving them the opportunity to pray over you and your sins will be forgiven. Go ahead, brother. 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man of Bella's month. Confess your faults one to another. I'm not going to pray over you unless you tell me what's afflicting you, first of all. And you go and you're seeking wise counsel and you're going to elders that you know can keep a confidence. Because if you've got something that's grieving you, whatever it is, you're drinking, you're pulling addiction, you're looking at the next door neighbor's wife or whatever. You've meditated on it. You've considered your conduct. You've realized that it's not right in God's eyes. And now you're doing what the Lord put in front of you to correct these measures. And these sins will be forgiven you because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You're casting all your cares upon your God. But in order to see this, you've got to reflect on it. You've got to meditate on it. Go ahead, brother. Elias was a man subject to like passion as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it, was, it might not rain. And it rained not on earth by the space of three years and six months. Go ahead. And he and he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. This is how powerful prayer is right here. I added a scripture. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. In other words, he was a man. And he had the same lust and temptations we got. Maybe he didn't have the exact same ones, but whatever he had that might be easy for you was just as grievous for him as whatever grieves you. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And when he prayed again, the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit because he was a faithful servant and he prayed earnestly and he kept himself straight. Let's continue. Let's go to Matthew, the seventh chapter. And we got two more places after this. Matthew 7. Matthew 7. Matthew 7 and pick it up, brother, at verse 20. 7 and 20. Go ahead. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. Yes, sir. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Yes, sir. Many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And thy name have cast out devils? And thy name have done many wonderful works? Uh -huh. And then when I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in We don't want to hear this. We don't want to hear this. 
And Jesus knows he, we don't want to hear this. And he doesn't want to tell us this. We've already read. He doesn't take any pleasure with killing us. So he's going to continue and he's going to tell us how we can be wise, how we can get out of hearing this. Go ahead, brother. 23. And then I'll profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that were connected. We don't want to hear that. So how do we get out of hearing that, brother? Go ahead and continue. Verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, whoever hears the sayings of his and doeth them, go ahead. I will liken him unto a wise man when he built his house upon a rock. So, how do we get out of hearing that? We are hearing his sayings. If you love me, keep my commandments. One jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled as long as there's a heaven and an earth. We hear his sayings and we do them. Then we're considered a wise man and we build our house on this rock. And this rock is Christ Jesus. Go ahead, brother. 25. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, and it was founded upon a rock. Uh -huh. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be like unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. Uh -huh. And the rain descended upon the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell. And great was the fall so of it. All those that hear his sayings and do them is like one that built this house upon a rock. All those that hear his sayings and don't do them is like one that built his house on the sand. And that's self-explanatory. You can't build anything on the sand. It's always shifting and moving. But when you build your house on a rock, it's a solid foundation. It doesn't move. And that rock is Christ Jesus. Let's go to Revelation, the third chapter. We've got one more place after this. It's all about our obedience or our faith, sisters and brothers. We read earlier in Revelation, and uh, Revelation 2 and 3, where the Lord's talking to the churches. And he told them to consider, to take a look at yourself, to reflect on yourself, to meditate on yourself, to make sure that you're right. You're not going to the left or the right. And those that overcome or endure until the end shall be saved and get these promises. Now let's look at the flip side of that. Revelation 3 and verse 15, brother, go ahead. I know that works, that thou art either cold or hot. I would that were, I would thou were cold or hot. The Lord says, you're not cold or hot. I want you to be either cold or hot, one or the other, not just kind of, well, which way the wind blows. Go ahead, brother. So, the, so then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Uh -huh. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Uh -huh. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in fire, that thou mightest be rich and white raiment, and thou mightest be clothed, and thou and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with I slave, that thou mayest see. Uh -huh. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, and be zealous, therefore repent. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous, therefore, and repent. Because if you're lukewarm, you're not hot or cold, he's going to spew you out of his mouth. He's going to push you away from him. So he's telling you again, reflect, put that mirror up. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. To repent, you've got to look at it to turn from it. You've got to understand it to turn from it. Go ahead, brother. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Uh -huh. To him that overcome will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. To him that overcome it will I grant to sit down with me in my throne. Let's go to Matthew, the 24th chapter, and this will be it. Matthew 24. Again, sisters and brothers, to repent, you've got to be able to see what it is you're turning from. And that takes reflection, consideration, meditation. It should be done daily, but especially in this season, it must be done. And if you're not doing it daily, you may as well start now. You're in class. Tomorrow will be day two. Monday will be day three. Tuesday, day four. Oh, but Brother Paul, I ain't got time. Oh, but sister or brother, whoever, make the time because the Lord made the time for you. And if you don't make the time for him, I don't know what to tell you. Matthew 24, pick it up in verse 38, brother. This will be it. Go ahead. 
For as, as in the day that thou were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Just like today, sisters and brothers, everyone's so concerned with everything except what thus saith the Lord. Everyone's too busy. We got lives we got to live, brother. When I got out of here, I go home, take a nap, get ready for Saturday night. I can't read tomorrow morning. Sunday's my only sleep in day. Because I stayed out late Saturday night. No excuses. No excuses. There are no excuses. The Lord doesn't deal with excuses. He deals with one thing and one thing only. He deals with results. Go ahead and continue, brother. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So uh -huh. shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and the one shall be taken in the other left. Uh -huh. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken in the other left. No, this isn't talking about the great tribulation, but that's for another lesson. Go ahead, brother. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. You gotta watch, because you don't know what hour the Lord's gonna return. He says that your time is now, your time is always. Well, I know I'm just going to get into a little folly today, and I'll be right tomorrow. What if you don't wake up tomorrow and you die in your folly today? It's not worth it. Go ahead, brother. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. You know someone's going to break into your house, you're going away for the weekend, you cancel your plans. Because you're watching. Someone's going to break in my cribby, man. I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to be sitting right here in the living room. When they break in, I got the cops sitting on a corner. You know they're coming. You're waiting for them. You know the Lord's going to return. You just don't know when. He says you better be caught waiting for him when he does return. Go ahead, brother. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh, uh -huh. who then is a faithful and wise servant? Who his, whom his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat and do see. Yes, sir. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Yes, sir. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But if, but and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord layeth his coming, uh -huh. and shall begin to smite his fellow servant to eat and to drink with the drunkard. Or just to slide back into the world. You don't got to beat people and eat and drink with drunkards or whatever. You just got to slide back into the world. That's all you got to do. And you don't even have to sin yet. Because as soon as you slide back into the world, guess what is coming right around the corner? Sin layeth at the door. You will fall back into sin. When you let the mind of Christ leave you, there's only one mind that can fill you. Go ahead, brother. Verse 15. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not away, uh -huh. and shall cut him asunder and appoint him to his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So in order to stay away from us taking part in that weeping and gnashing of teeth, what we do is we meditate on God's word. We consider our own conduct when we're examining ourselves. And then we repent and we turn from whatever we see is contrary to our understanding of his word. Not some other brothers or sisters. Remember, we walk and we live in our faith. Examining ourselves before the Passover. This was Reflections in the Mirror. I appreciate the opportunity to rightly divide God's word. And I hope somebody got something from this lesson. Oh, you know what, sisters and brothers? I forgot. Um, this is on the website also. A lot of people don't know how to pray and meditate. This is on our um, uh, website, and it's just a thing called Daily Personal Inventory. Okay, this was taken out of the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous. It's really good for prayer and meditation. It's nothing contrary in this. It talks about what we do when we retire at night, what we do when we wake up in the morning, and what we do is we go through the day. And it's just a guide. Because the book doesn't say exactly how to pray and meditate to the Lord. It just says that we need to. And this, if you do not know how to pray and meditate, is a good place for you to start. Okay? Um, and we'll go ahead and we'll end the live feed. Everyone, have a great Sabbath. And we'll see you next week.